Right now, let's talk about the Dune movies. Dune, yes. 1984. When did you first see this movie? I was a big David Lynch fan. So that's what led me down the road to Dune. And everybody was always like, that movie sucks. Yeah. I watched it, and I loved it. Mm. And I've watched it many, many times over the years. And we were talking before, Crystal and I, about how you need to watch this movie multiple times for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. You can't well, watch it one time and no. be like, okay, have I to, get it. You also have to hunt down the fan reconstructed version to see the proper film, but yes. That too, yes. yes. But I mean, just in general, because it comes fast and hard, and a lot of the Dune lore is within uh, images or mm -hmm. or, mm. or uh, Paul's diary or or like something he's reading, or yeah. that, that's how the information comes to you. I will say, uh, when did you first see this? Friday. Okay. I saw this when I was a teen. Because I, I remember seeing all the stuff for the made for TV one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember being real like interested in it. I tried, I never watched it at the right time. So I was always like in the middle of a, like one of the parts and I was always confused. Uh, but I found out later on, I'm like, oh, that was a remake. I didn't realize there was a movie, uh, a book. Uh, so I went back and I watched it on like cable one day and I went, that sucks. Cause <laughs> I was expecting Star Wars. It was not like Star Wars. No. So I didn't like it, but I was- Are you sure? I was too it's young. Well, <laughs> Frank Herbert apparently thought Star Wars borrowed a few things from him. Uh, yeah, so I didn't like it at the time. I, w I didn't really know who Lynch was at the time. I was too young to really get it. Uh, I've now rewatched it as an adult. I have very different opinions on it. I still don't think it's a great film, and David Lynch would agree with me. <laughs> um, but it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, David Lynch, he's weird. He makes things weird. And he definitely did add weird stuff to this. But this is early in his career. Mm -hmm. He actually, and I read the book right before I watched all three of these because I, I knew the basic. I want a dollar for every time he says that he read the book. Yeah. <laughs> to Just his credit. And I haven't, so I'm very yeah. to his credit, to see how this he lines really up. really did try to make sense of this weird world. Yeah. He really did try. Whereas you don't think that's something he would do these days. No. And then, of course, the studio was like, what the fuck? This is like three something hours. We want a two hour movie. And they chop the shit out of it. Yeah. And it shows. It yes. was already a hand me down from Jed Wororski. Yeah. You and Ridley I mean? Scott. And Ridley Scott. And Dan O'Bannon. Yeah. And H.R. Giger. And yeah. that's kind of how Alien was born. Yes. Honestly. Yes. And um, no, I really, <laughs> really enjoy the film. I think this one does the best out of all of them to put it all in one movie because it's so much information. Yes. It is so hard. I can't imagine trying to do that again, all in one movie. Yeah. yeah. But I will say watching that for the first time. Yes. Yeah, super, super confusing. And I'm happy I actually read that some of the pages first. So I understood the characters. I needed to understand the characters and when they're coming from first to actually be able to even watch out for the first time. But I enjoyed it. I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Now this is, this has one thing that, that's from the book that none of the others have. The inner monologues. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. What did you think of that? I absolutely 100% love it. This movie is super cozy and artistically pleasing. Like, the the set design, the costume design, everything about this movie is super cozy to me. For, as soon as it opens up, you get Virginia Madsen doing like, and then Arrakis was a dune, the cold dune. Which I think they add it. They're like, we got to make sense of this shit. This mm -hmm. I don't give a shit. I'm here for it. <laughs> I, I love it. And oh my God, uh, Kyle McLaughlin is so fucking handsome. And I love listening to him talk. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's like, just all the inner monologue stuff is, is, is great. This to is me. the first thing he did with Lynch, right? Um, was like relatively I, I, I want to say, yeah, it's 84. When does the hidden come out the next year? I don't 85? know. I, don't know. I think it's blue velvet come out. That's later, right? I think that's 86. Mm. I'm probably getting it all Other wrong. People from Dune are in that too. Yeah. Well, there's um, a lot of, there's a lot of people from, what did you think of the pieces? inner monologue in this? It took me a while to grasp it. I think it's very overloading at first. It's overwhelming. Mm. There's a lot happening and it takes a while for you to actually dive into the movie. If you've never seen it before to get what is happening. So it took me a while to hear it, understand it, and then just kind of go with the flow. I mean, I got it right away because I'm not an idiot like Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! At least I'm not wearing a fucking stupid spandex. No, you know, I'm not supposed to react to it because I said it in my head, you can't hear it. Oh, that's right, <laughs> I can't hear it at all. It is a movie that you need to watch multiple times to actually get yes. the full scope of it and really let it sink. But all, yeah. uh, to the credit, 
you'll never the theatrical version, the version we all know, you'll never fully get it because it's bastardized. Right. Um, and then and that the whole third act of the movie is like, all right, motherfuckers, oh let's my go. God. Everything yeah. happens. I was like, wait. I whoa. will say yeah. the cast is really, really, really it's good. Star studded. Now they aged up Paul a lot. I'm okay that, with that. He's supposed to be 15. No? No. No. He's supposed to be this to me when I at least, like I said, reading the book and stuff like that in the first book, he to me, yeah, he seemed like a a mature kid. Yeah, like he he understood kind of what was going on. Mm-hmm. I I don't know if think of it more like a royalty where it's like you grow up in this atmosphere, so you automatically have this maturity. Mm-hmm. But he's still a kid, and there's still he's still learning. Like I he's obeying, like he's imbe- obeying his parents and their will and what they wish. But there's still immaturity and needs to learn, and in that move like there's in that and the um mini series he's just he's too mature way too fast i think he has to be though because like before we know it duke leto's dead yeah and he literally sure. has to take over house of trades yeah. but i see what you're saying though because it, it it's more impactful when it is a younger actor and i think uh, jodorowsky was going to have his son play mm. paul oh shit who was like what 15 which yeah. would, which would be the same perfect. age but i mean yeah. despite the age i think he plays him really really well I, he's a he's a young handsome guy yeah i yeah. like i like pretty much a bunch of the actors in this i love uh patrick stewart patrick as gurney stewart is <gasps> so good not in the mood Moods a thing for cattle and love play, not fighting. Uh, oh, defend yourself. I love Gurney. Gurney yeah. is great. Ex- uh, I have my opinions about the, the newest one, but yeah. I Gurney is a great character. No, he's really, really good. Um, and Patrick Stewart just plays a... Thufer oh. Howitt, the Mentat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Completely. Like, in all these versions, minimized, but this is the only one that has the red lips. Yeah. Him and, didn't realize he him and uh, Piter right. also have the red lips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which played by Brad Dorf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brad Dorf's really great in this. Brad Dorf's um, so good in this. And this is before he's even, who, this is before he's even Chucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is Which before, is, you know, <laughs> think about it. Yeah, Jorgen Prock now as Duke Leto is good. Uh, he's so he's good. really good yeah. in this. Um, I yeah, would say he. I think he's the favorite only one. Leto. The only ones who don't really do it for me are, um, oh God, what's her name as uh, as Shani. Uh, oh, Sean Young. Yeah, I love her. She's not in this. You know, really? you know, not in this. I'm not digging her in this. She's kind of there. Her and Jessica, I think, are so fucking weak in this. That's another thing. They, they really are weak. They really, because like Jessica's like almost the main character after Paul in yeah. the book. Yes. I mean, it's an ensemble thing. But each, it's it's the mother. It's the yeah. mother of the. She like really gets kind of downgraded in this version. She's paired back a lot. She yes. cries a lot. Yeah. She yes. cries a lot in this. And I'm sorry for someone that's supposed to be this powerful and kicks ass like this. She's supposed to be. She's the one who taught him. Paul, all this stuff of how to stay calm, you know, fear is the mind killer. Yeah. But yes, she just falls for it so fast. I get it. Her husband just died. No. Or not her husband, I'm sorry. Her lover. Yeah. She's well, this concubine. Her concubine. Yeah, yeah exactly. He needed to keep his concubine. marriage open so he could marry into another other, house. The other houses. Yes. Um, but he did so, love as her. As Paul mm-hmm. also happens. I mean, but, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, they're uh, all gorgeous. Yeah. So all she's the also, she, are gorgeous. She's also a Benny Gesserit, too. Yes. So Jessica's not great in this, but the Reverend Mother is awesome. Oh, she's she so plays good. her perfectly. <gasps> yeah, I would say uh, she. I think that one's my favorite. Uh, yeah. The Mother. And yeah. uh, they did the voice, the scary voice. <sighs> it's so. I think this is my favorite version of the voice too that we've yes. gotten in all of these. I um, I I people were like, why would David Lynch do this? He's not a big sci-fi dude. Although he kind of is. There's a little bit of sci-fi and stuff. Sure. He turned down Return of the Jedi. Why did he do this? And I think it's all the dream stuff because he's big into dreams. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this is where I can do a sci-fi thing and put weird dream shit in. And I love the visuals in it for the dreams. It's an art movie. Yeah. Okay. It there, it's very heavy art influence. So it, yeah. it, it's Lynch. You know what you're getting into. And um, yeah, like you said, it tries to tell the story. Uh, some of it, it's not the movie's fault. They cut out the Jameis fight. Mm-hmm. They the, shouldn't cut that out. That is so... So big, and it's such it, it, like, where it is now. So there's one good edit they did make. One good th- decision they made. They decided not to, not good, but for time reasons, they decided not to do the thing where Jessica and Paul get away, and then they meet up with Liet and Duncan Ido, and then they die, and then they get away again. They condensed that into one scene, which mm-hmm. I thought was okay. 
Although it leads yeah, to a that. pretty lame Duncan Idaho. He kind of sucks in this. Uh, he's forgettable, and that's yeah. the problem. I get it. But, he is forgettable. But people always say, like, the movie's not like the book. The movie's not like the book. It did have stuff. It had the it Jameis did. fight, which, again, is important. In the movie, it's just like, oh, you're here now. Here's your new name. It's like, what? Yeah. They had the water of life where they drown the worm. But, yeah. Yeah. That's, cut see, out. Those are two huge. I'm pretty sure parts. they cut out Liat's death. It's not like it is in the book, but they cut him out because Max von Sydow. It's like, where did he go? Uh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. No, there uh, wasn't an There expl- There wasn't an explosion because he dies from like a. The, the no, no, no. They, they show him die Wait. in the theatrical version. I'm almost positive. Oh, I didn't realize that was in the theatrical version. I'm almost positive. Okay, well, it's Ma- in I could there. be getting it wrong. I was in there. It was there. a lot of Dune. I guess I'm wrong. It was a lot of Dune. Uh, <laughs> and they also cut out. They also cut out the forced marriage at the end with the Princess Irulan. Yes, they did cut. Good yeah. choice. Which, which leads to a change they made in the next one. Um, but yeah, so that was not Lynch's fault. The studio did that. Sure. By the way, Lynch is in the movie. He's the guy on the sand. Yeah. Where, he's the guy on the. Uh, He's like, but what about all the spice, spice miner? And like, damn the fucking, spice. Get, damn the spice. Yeah. So things that he did change that I think fans might have a problem with. Spice is now the thing that bends space and time. No. It folds time. It allows the navigators to fold time. The engines fold the time. The spice, because they're not allowed to have AI because a previous civilization, they made robots that took over. Yes. The spice increases the navigator's minds Mm -hmm. and they're able to predict which they're able to navigate and predict which outcome will lead them to their destination. They're not physically folding space. The engines do that. Okay. This movie, it's just they, they do it. Well, is it metaphoric because they're shooting shit out of their mouths? There's like this plasma. Oh, no, in the movie, in the movie, the movie straight up says the spice bends space and time. Yes. But uh, could it be metaphorical is what I'm saying? Speaking of no. navigators. No. No, no, speaking of navigators, the book doesn't show the navigators. Yeah. And two versions of these movies, they're like, we got to show it. The There's movie, no reason you have to show it. The movie shows, although there is an interesting thing. Okay. The movie shows the navigator right away. He's fucking cool, man. It's bad. It is it's weird. a giant it's because so they're weird so weird it comes down and opens up. It's like this giant mutated baby. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, this is what happens when you have too much spice. Yeah, the, yeah. too so much drugs. Drugs are spice. bad. Yeah. Don't do drugs. That's <laughs> so, the whole point. But they have of the these movies. interpreters that have like this giant microphone. <laughs> yeah. and they speak this weird language, and they're like, "But um, damn." So they show the navigator. They add this whole scene in the beginning that kind of spoils the whole thing that the emperor is working with the space. So the spacing guild runs everything. They have a monopoly but they're kind of like they use the emperor as like their yeah. puppet yeah so they like spoil that where they show their involvement which I was okay with I think it's just for pacing dude however apparently um, <sighs> because they do show navigators later in books and they do look like they do in the TV series after this but apparently uh, Frank Herbert when he saw this he got the idea of them like mutating more from this I guess he kind of liked that really he actually wasn't negative about this movie He's what like, was what was his criticism? No, he was like, like he's like, I wish they would have kept the banquet scene in from the book, but I understand. He's like, it basically uh, tells my story. Like he wasn't too broken up about. It. He wasn't like they ruined it. You and can't. I think he might have known that they the studio forced a lot of changes. Sure. But thank you, Mr. Herbert, because I agree with you. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> yeah. I get it, I get it. But the thing is, how are you able to put all of that into one movie that's a little yeah, over two hard. hours? You can't. Uh, what you call all the oh. all the, pol- the 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 political stuff is like way pared down. Like, it's yes. real. Yeah, it's like but, totally stripped out. But that's really what the book is. And yeah. you could tell Laurentis they want it Star Wars. Oh, dude, he fucking put that cigar in his mouth. Yeah. And he's like, come on, baby. we I just picked this up. Here we go. Dude. And, uh, yeah. I will say the language in this movie probably resembles the language in the book the most, I want to say. It's a I, little bit more on the artistic side. I sure. think the book is written beautifully. By the beautifully. way. Beautifully. And I think the language in this movie gets it more than... I think the miniseries is a little bit more blunt and the 2000, uh, the newer one, I don't think really gets the language at so, all on the artful part. So sure. most books, later editions, come with the, uh, the uh, what you would call it, the, the, the dictionary for the Imperium. Yeah. Uh, the language, what is it called officially? Hold it's on. The, uh, the, term, the terminology, terminology of the, the Imperium. Imperium. When that tape came out, it came with a little booklet. Because I guess people were buying the movie going, what, what the fuck are they saying? I wish I still had it. This I is, have the booklet at home. You have really the booklet cool. while well, I have the movie. And I want you guys to know that on Patreon, I will record a video of me reading the entire terminology of the oh Imperium. God, I Jesus. love it so much. You can go on Patreon right now for that. <laughs> so, a um, couple other changes. What's wrong with Gurney? The shields are almost oh. invisible in the book. 
They went in a very different direction. Opposite, opposite. Their weird jelly polygon box. No, don't defend. I'm kind of into it. I it like doesn't it. even work. Like they make you it like it for it's, like it's 84? It's and stupid it's and I like so it. You bad. like it for 84. I liked it for 84. Would you yeah. like it now? Uh, no, because it wouldn't work. A YouTube no. channel did add these shields to the new Dune movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I have right. to see that. The corridor crew? So, uh, there's a YouTube channel that did that. It just looks so ridiculous. Well, it, it, fits, it fits this style for me. Does it? Because they barely use it. They do it a couple times. I don't know. It just fits that. It, it, it's just another weird thing in this pantheon of weird fucking yeah. shit that like all the liberties taken again with the designs of everybody, the, the heart, the Harkonnen, all of the uh, yeah. House of Trades like interiors are like fine carved wood. It's amazing. Oh, no, I love the sets. No, the sets saying. are great. The yeah. costumes great. and the makeup and everything. I just I'm uh, so in love with it. The Baron is definitely my favorite Baron. I think this is my favorite because it's He's just so disgusting. Uh, he's disgusting. It Red so... hair, barf. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I know. Oh, wait a I second. know. It's always <laughs> your house, Harkonnen. Yeah, I'm not house Harkonnen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, can I at least be Jessica then? I guess that. Well, I, well I, no. I, in this, no, in this movie, they don't mention that. So I know. fuck you. <laughs> uh, I don't. Is Je Jessica's not Harkonnen? No, but her, her, blood is. Blood her, fa her father is grandfather. from the book. Um, oh, yeah. My blood. Grandfather is, is yes, Baron Harkonnen is yeah. Lady Jessica's father because the Bene Gesserit have a weird breeding program, but they don't tell they them don't who tell their the father is. They, they yeah, milk everybody from each house and then they make try to get concoctions. Like the yeah, because yeah. yeah. they want to make the quiz. That's Hatterack. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Baron is definitely grosser, and scary oh, German Jerry? guy is. Uh, oh, scary German oh, guy is like oh you are gosh. so oh. beautiful, they my make Baron. Them, like, 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 so in the book, they're disgusting people. They're horrible people. They're oh, yeah. The Baron is a straight up cuties fan. Oh yeah, Woo! yes, he's a, yeah, he's he a diddler for but sure. Like, oh, but yeah. like, they're, it's just more like they're tyrannical and just they have slaves and stuff, and they're horrible to the Fremen. But in this one, they're like. Oh, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna crush a mouse and drink its juice. And <laughs> yeah. our doctors have needles in their eyes. And um, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm in, I'm into all that stuff. Yes. And, and it's it. I think it's the only portrayal like on film of. It's not the full cutie thing, <laughs> right? But there is. Uh, a yeah, lot they didn't of, want him to like molest that dude. He kills the dude, kills and they make him. it creepy, but, and but, they make it sexual. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and later on at the famous. Because it, it's like an open secret that he's, yeah, you know, gay. Let, let's Ugh. talk about uh, the most famous Harkonnen, Fade Ratha, played by Sting. Woo, Sting. Fade. He's so fucking hot, Wait, dude. I think he, I think <laughs> in his little undies not, later I when just, he comes I out. I saw that and I was just like, I was kind of like, ew. And then what's his like, face? He's so just, nasty. What's his face from Eraserhead? Uh, Jack <laughs> Nance. Yeah, Jack Nance is in this and he's just like. Ugh. Yeah, you know, doing his Jack oh, no, Nance thing. Just did not look. I'm just like, oh, just not my style. I was just I, like, ah. Oh, he's he's a, he's he's, he's in like shape. Shit. He's looking he's good. He's like, yeah, but I think it's like two inch. Like, I was just like, oh, he was having the time of his life. He was oh, he would yeah. have, he was tan he was having tantric sex with the Baron for sure. Yeah. Yes. Whoa. Oh, so, did you ever see the made up uh, commercial of for the Baron for the skincare? Oh no. yeah, Justin oh, showed me that yeah. the YTMD. It's pretty good. Oh my <laughs> they god! They put him in a skincare thing, and then it's like made by two doctors, and it's Fade Ratha yes. and uh, Ramon. Funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, I think had they left in the scenes that were important, fans of the book would have been more tolerable to the weird things they added, like. All right, so Thufur Howlett, when he becomes the Harkonnen's Mentat, mm -hmm. they do poison him, and they do have to administer an anti-virus, or uh, what's it called, anti-venom in him. But I don't remember it being from a cat that they need to milk that's also attached to a mouse. Yeah. That well. was, I think that was at it. But it's it's when you take out all the real important stuff and the story becomes so disconjointed that the fans of the book, they're already not enjoying that, and then you're adding the weird stuff the weird stuff, and I could see why they would have revolted against this. I mean, the cat mousing was a little uh, weird. I was like, oh, kitty, oh. And kitty. I, I get there's changes, and <laughs> yeah. that's not Lynch's fault, because again, it was not his fault that they chopped that all they that they chopped stuff it up. up. But I don't know, it, it's those touches that make it kind of his. Yeah. But, but I also like, wanted to be faithful to the book, don't if forget. If they yeah. had the touches in addition to a more faithful story. Sure. I will say, I love Everett McGill. Oh, he Ever is Miguel's not fantastic. how I pictured Stilgar. <laughs> Stilgar in the other two is more how I pictured him. Yeah. 
Like, Stogar is this, like, tough, like, yeah. angry guy. You don't think Ever McGill's a tough, angry guy? Well, like, he's smiling. All the, he's, like, real thrilled to be there. He's like, hey, well, what's up, like, happy guys? to be alive. Well, he's yeah. happy because he, he's like, Moa Deeb, check him out. He's too happy. Do we have worm sign? Lucian, we have worm sign, the likes of which even God has never seen. He's got to be more hesitant at first. He's, He's like, gonna oh, save hey, what's up? Your more. name's Uso. It'll be the base. <laughs> He's going to make it rain on Arrakis. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Dune always boils down to how good are their sandworms. Yes. I love the design of the sandworms. I think I think they look the best. The execution. Yeah, I will say effect, that. Yeah. The execution is hit or miss. It's puppets. sometimes, it's, exactly. yeah, but sometimes it's like it, they're too puppety. It's like it's like watching a Godzilla movie. It's like I know that this is not a giant monster, but this is a movie that wants me to think it is, and yeah. it's got a big. But this is trying to be Star Wars. You can't show me some sock puppets that don't look real. I'm also here for it though. And the green screen is terrible too. for when they're riding it. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it looks a little rushed for sure. Yeah. But I think again, like. Oh, the biggest change, I forgot. They got rid of the weirding way, the space karate, and they made weirding modules where they have oh, to hug. <laughs> <laughs> and the My thing is, gosh. they're using a lot of guns in this, yeah. but in the Dune universe, they're you have laze guns, but they're not really useful because if they hit a shield, it causes like an uncontrollable explosion. Sure. So that's why they use knives and stuff mm -hmm. in this, but this movie, so they're like, big. make it like Star Wars. Yeah, no. <laughs> so Basically. He's got to, uh, you know, Amawadib's got to uh, bring balance to the force. Oh, my God. Oh, that's the other big change. Sorry. I was going to my final thought before I did that. The whole, like, the prophecy is planted by the Benny Gesserit. That too. Thrown out. He's literally it space is. Jesus. It's right there from the beginning. Well, he is no. space Jesus. Well, they do say it in the beginning, though. It, they just speed it up. So you're not a getting, little bit. But not, no, like, not, he literally makes the sky rain at the end. I know, but you're he does. not getting the exposition of his growth. And that's the problem. Yeah, for sure. But they still say it in the beginning. They're like, they're like, oh, he's the, the you know, the Quasar Hatterack. Yeah. He, he's the one Jessica birthed a boy. So the Wormers are good. That was a really uh, good. They remind uh, me a little bit Benny of a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I will say Aaliyah I was, was doing really the voice. good in this. This is my favorite Aaliyah, yeah. the little young girl. Yeah. And she's creepy. Oh, yeah. She's fucking creepy. She's really creepy. I'll she's say supposed she's to be creepy. creepy. Yeah, she's definitely yeah. creepy in this. I would say the Sandworms, just, it, just when I saw them, it reminded me of Beetlejuice. Yeah. I mean, like, I love the comparison of all the sandworms in sci-fi movies, like in Tremors. Yeah. And uh, big, and tremor, big Tremors vibes, I think, pulled from this for sure with the oh, vibrations yeah, and all that. Did. And Same I will say the action's not Beetlejuice. great, but I don't think Lynch is the best action director. I think it's fine. It's f is it fine I, I almost said I fine and fun. Did. Oh, I heard that. It is fun. I have a good so time finally, when I see Patrick Stewart and, yes. and uh, Kyle McLaughlin go at it. I prefer Excuse these me. fighting than the miniseries. Okay. This it goes uh, the newest one for fighting, then David Lynch, and then the miniseries. Sure. How did you feel about the space slave owner cutie fans all being redheads? Is this what I'm going to get the entire goddamn episode from a fucking latex loser? <laughs> Whoa! This is my still suit. <laughs> it's the only way I can breathe. It traps the moisture from the body in these little pockets, and then the feces God, is I packed would... here. Mm -hmm. How uh, much moisture is being kept in there? I will right say now. the blue eyes were okay. For blue a eyes movie. are good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think the blue eyes were that bad in any of them. No. It wasn't no. like horrific. Well, it was like traditional like Roto effects. Yeah. yeah. So one I final like. thing I want to say about Dune 1984. If you do want to see, because there is a TV version that's expanded, but yeah. Lynch hates it because it's edited all weird and he it's it's got the Alan Smithy credit on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, he won't return to do this. He won't return to re-edit it. I don't blame so him. So fans took it upon themselves to get all the deleted scenes they could and then find the like script as it was written and put the scenes where it is. And I don't want to say where you can find it, but it's very easy. It's called like the Spice Driver edition. Mm -hmm. It's like three hours, but it's like a quick three hours. Yeah. Like it finally, it's like a after you read the book, like and watch the movie, like, oh, wow, he did kind of get a lot of it right. It just was ripped I like away how you say him. it's a quick three hours after I just spent, was it, at least 15 hours, over 15 hours of Dune. I'm just it like, I don't know if I could do another three hours. I would it doesn't go back for feel, this one. It doesn't feel long, though. Like oh, it flows well. Yeah. So I think he, I think you, I don't like it as much as you. I have a soft spot for it. I I'm don't biased, think it's a great so. movie, but I do think a lot of the hate and stuff that Lynch gets is unwarranted because he Agreed. did have a solid film that yeah. was more faithful to a degree that was Rothwell. He, he tried to make it as faithful to the book as he could. 
So. And yet in his yeah. own style, which is nice. With it, yeah, yeah, with his own spin with on it, sure. Sp- but it, it, was, have... it was fun. It showed this ridiculousness. Yeah, and it's I think early that in the career. It. It's yeah. early in his career. Oh, Toto did all the music. Yeah, and Toto did. By the way, all three, I like the music great. in all three versions. It's fucking, it's, well, I got yeah. the soundtrack right here. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the profit the profit theme is really good. Oh, it's so good. Um, Yeah, so that is David Lynch's Dune. Just feels cozy. Moving on. <laughs> 